So there's the logic problem. If God is all evil and omnipotent, then how is it that evil still exists? Um, uh, how is it that a loving God allows evil to, um, you know, exist in the world? And there's, it seems like there's only two options. Either God is not all living, um, or God is not all powerful. Uh, if God is not all powerful, then he's not worthy of being worshipped. And if God is not all loving, then, um, well, why would you, why would you love a God that allows, you know, uh, flies, you know, uh, in, in Africa to nest in the eyes of children just so they can go blind? I mean, that's the whole purpose of that fly is, you know, that it eats away at eye tissue. You know, and you know why is it that we've got Zika virus that, you know, uh, someone gets bit by a mosquito and now their baby's got macrocephaly. You know, if God is all loving, why does He um, allow that? And if God is all powerful, why doesn't He just stop it? So God must not be all loving or all powerful, right? That's the that's the that's the question. And so you've got uh, Job who deals with this question. Like, why is it that bad things happen to good people? And why is it that it seems that um, bad people tend to do get along fine, you know? Um, and then even there's that, just that other, you know, uh, group of people who, not necessarily bad people, not necessarily good people. I mean, I mean, they're, they're good people, but they don't have faith in God. They don't see a reason to have faith in God. And, and their life is going along just fine too. So, you know, why is it that we have so much evil in the world? Why is it that we have so much pain in the world if God is so loving and if God is so powerful? And, you know, maybe, maybe the answer is, you know, how is it that we define power? And how is it that we define love? Um, you know, it's, it's when, when Christians think of power, right, we think of the cross, you know, um, the Apostle Paul says, you know, uh, the cross of the gospel of Christ is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. He's referring specifically to Jesus being crucified and resurrected from the dead. Um, and the idea of love and suffering are so intertwined. I mean, why is it that Jesus did decide to suffer and did decide to die on the cross? Um, human suffering is part of what it what it means uh, to love for example you know when women um, give birth uh, you know it's a very painful process but they love their kids more than anything else um, so human suffering and the love of God have an inter interconnection it's connecting tissue it's it's important um, that we don't try to separate um, our to, to, to separate suffering uh, from our relationship with God because uh, suffering is part of that relationship. It's, it, we, we sanctify our suffering when we offer it to Christ. Um, and it, we have meaning in our suffering when we put it in the context of Christ's crucifixion. Um, so that's, you know, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, and then, you know, the other question though is, I mean, when you're looking at Job, um, and what he's wrestling with it's, it's very interesting he's got these three friends and they sit around and they basically tell Job well the reason why that you are suffering is because you're a sinner and but I mean the beginning of the story lays out very specifically that Job is not um, it says that um, Job was a perfect and upright man um, stable in all of his ways, you know. Uh, and but you've got these people who've got this idea that if something bad happens to you, it's because you did something wrong. Um, and you know, it's interesting because this this kind of uh, thinking, this kind of theology, is so prevalent in so much TV evangelism that if you the reason that you didn't get healed is because you don't have faith, or um, the reason why bad things happen to you is because you know, you don't uh, trust God, you don't love God, or, or you've got such and such sin in your life, or whatever. 
and you know it's a, it's really just a bunch of hogwash and I think that's really the big issue that Job is trying to get through these people's heads is that you know it, when you when you have a very Deuteronomic Deuteronomistic um, way of looking at life where you know God says in Deuteronomy you know if you if you do well then you'll be blessed and if you don't do well then you'll be cursed and there's really that two two paths um, that God lays out at the end of Deuteronomy chapters I think it's 36 through 39 or something like that um, and Job kind of comes around the other side of that conversation and says hold on hold on wait we see you know, wicked people all the time, and they just, you know, get along, you know, and they've got, you know, the best uh, of everything, and they don't have any troubles, and you also see righteous people who, you know, all these terrible things happen to them, and it's just very um, inconsistent with that kind of worldview, and so it's, it's a difficult question, and What's interesting to me about Job is that, you know, <clears throat> Job <clears throat> and all of his friends think that God is the one who is testing him or punishing him. But really, actually what's going on is Satan is testing God. And he's basically the wager. It's a, it's a crazy wager. Hey, you know what? The only reason why Job uh, loves you is because you blessed him. The only reason why Job loved you is because he's got all this money. The only reason why Job loves you is because he's a very healthy man. And when God says, all right, go ahead, you know, take away his health, take away his his wealth, take away his family, take away everything and see if he, you know, uh, see if you're right. And Satan is wrong uh, in the case of Job. Uh, Job's love for God uh, transcends even the worst of human suffering but he's still very confused and he you know up until that point he, he hadn't really sinned and even there he didn't sin when he was demanding questions you know from God and basically saying look man I don't know what happened but you know God is rendering um, uh, he's, he's beating me up here you know it's it's a crazy it's a crazy story and I, I love it um, because at the very end we don't get an answer from God God doesn't tell us um, why it is that humans suffer and why it is that there's so much suffering in our world he doesn't tell us he kind of just answers the question with hey you know I'm God and I've got the universe um, under control and you know it, the world is not topsy-turvy because you had a bad day and the universe isn't going to fall apart because you know you're having a bad time it doesn't mean that God's not in control and to suggest that is perhaps the highest point of human hubris and maybe that's just the lesson that we get from Job is that you know we don't need to know everything and our insistence that we do is just pride um, anyways I mean these are just some thoughts you know waiting and uh, thinking <clears throat> about uh, the story of Job I hope that maybe you benefited from it and you know all right well uh, much love bye